In the early 1900s, there was something particular about the electricity in Southern California. Play music on a phonograph from another region, and it would sound deep and drowsy. Likewise, if you plugged in an electric clock from another area, it would lose 10 minutes every hour. Some devices did not work properly at all. Prior to October 1948, the electricity in Southern California ran at a different frequency than the rest of the nation. Current alternated at a slower rate of 50 cycles per second, or 50 hertz, rather than the 60 hertz we use today throughout North America. The standard had not yet been set in 1893 when the Mill Creek No. 1 hydroelectric plant near Redlands, California became the nation's first three-phase power generating and distribution system. As generators and equipment for Mill Creek was being designed and installed, it was up to the supervising engineer, Dr. Lewis Bell of Thompson Houston Electric Company, which was later merged with Edison General Electric to form GE as we now know it today, to determine the operating frequency. Around the same time, GE's primary rival, Westinghouse, along with Nikola Tesla, was already designing equipment for 60 Hz operation. Although Bell could have followed suit, he ultimately chose 50 Hz, which was also favored by his European affiliate, AEG. With Bell's decision, Southern California's grid was unwittingly locked into a 50 Hz frequency. GE switched to 60 Hz a year later to better maintain their market share with Westinghouse, and as electricity became available to more and more regions, the rest of the power grid began to operate on the same frequency. For decades afterward, Southern California's 50 Hz grid was sort of an electrical enclave, as much of the infrastructure was made to operate and interconnect with Mill Creek's 50 Hz alternating current. Although the borders were not marked in any official atlases, crossing the lines had consequences for both consumers and manufacturers alike. While resistive loads such as incandescent light bulbs and heating elements were able to operate on either frequency, items such as induction motors, including the synchronous motors utilized in electric clocks and timers, were dependent on proper line frequency to operate at the correct speed. This required manufacturers to make separate 50 Hz models for the Southern California market. Also, as people moved into Southern California from outside the region, they either have to have their existing appliances converted or purchase new appliances that would operate on the 50 Hz power. By the 1930s, something had to be done as more and more consumer items were becoming dependent on a certain line frequency for proper operation and industrial commercial customers were having trouble finding 50 Hz motors or equipment. The Los Angeles Bureau of Power and Light, now LADWP, converted to 60 Hz in 1936 in order to set power from Hoover Dam, but it wasn't until 1945 that Southern California Edison began the conversion of its grid to 60 Hz alternating current. The conversion, however, was not as simple as flipping a switch. Over the next couple years, Southern California Edison phased in 60 Hz power to its 765,000 at the time customers. Equipment was retrofitted or upgraded and clock exchange depots where Edison customers could trade in their existing 50 Hz electric clocks for 60 Hz models were set up across the region. The final tally consisted of about 475,000 electric clocks, 380,000 lighting fixtures, and 58,000 refrigerators. The conversion to 60 Hz alternating current costed Edison $34.4 million but on October 27, 1948, Southern California Edison's grid finally operated in unison with the rest of our nation.